Let's get Richard Gage on stage here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a true honor to be joined today, 10 days after our 9-11 anniversary show where we were censored and banned off of YouTube, surprise, surprise, to be joined by someone who has certainly a, a, a solid history of being censored and shadow banned. And uh, for those of you that don't know Richard Gage's history, by the way, I'm Richard, thank you for joining us today on, on all days of our first day uncensored back on YouTube. Let's see if we can do it again. Can you say something that right out of the gate that's just going to get us cut off on YouTube? <laughs> yeah, I can actually. Do you want me to? <laughs> well, what what what's your? Uh, so we got banned for pointing out that there are false positives with COVID nineteen tests. Yeah, I've heard about that, and uh, and you might get banned for um, pointing out the evidence that nine eleven was an inside job as well. <laughs> All right. Well, Richard, we're definitely going to get to that for sure. But I want to give my audience the background and, and why I have so much respect for you and, and the work that you've done. And, and I, I'm going to I'm going to start by calling out Alex Jones. I'm, I'll bet you've never been introduced this way. But if you're the powers that be and, and you're behind 9-11 for in whatever sense, you're, you're if you're profiteering even off 9-11, even if you had nothing to do with making it happen or letting it happen actively. And, and, and remember, Alex Jones got his start in media, terrestrial radio, AM. He, got, he had the gatekeepers wanted him to be the face of 9-11 truth. And, and Richard, I, I want you to know, because I, I have said this, you know, we, we've never talked like this, but I, I, have, I, have, I name drop you all the time in explaining Alex Jones and the manipulation of the conversation around 9-11. Because if you are, if you are one of these profiteers, the last thing that you want is someone who is credible and smart and reasonable and, and doesn't yell about the frogs turning gay. You know, someone, someone who can wear a suit and a tie and has the credentials and the and, and the intellectual background to back up his assertions. Whatever, whatever you do, you want to make sure that Richard Gage is not at the forefront of the 9-11 truth movement. You want to make sure someone like Alex Jones is at the forefront of the 9-11 truth movement. Richard Gage, uh, a San Francisco Bay Area architect, and this is just from the Wikipedia for uh, architects and engineers for 9-11 truth, founded Architects and Engineers for 9-11 truth in 2006. His website states that he is a member of the American Institute's Institute of Architects. He's worked as an architect for 20 years and was involved in the construction of numerous fireproof steel frame buildings and can, became convinced of the need to create an organization that brings together architects and engineers after listening to an independent uh, radio station interview with theologian David Ray Griffin. So, um, Richard, with, with that being said, uh, what else do you think our audience needs to know now? Wow, almost almost 20 years on, 19 plus years on from 9-11 uh, about your background and, and how you got into this. I was shocked in, in, on March 29th, 2007 to hear uh, the author, David Ray Griffin, who's written 14 books on the subject of 9-11 truth. Uh, it just hit me over the head <clears throat> to hear this interview because he was talking about the oral histories of the first responders, 500 of which were recorded uh, a month after 9-11. And 156 of them, it turns out, were talking about sounds of explosions, uh, hearing and feeling and experiencing explosions. Uh, and this is before the towers came down. And they're seeing flashes of light, many of them. Uh, this is absolutely extraordinary. I didn't know any of this. I mean, I, I just swallowed the official lie, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, but uh, it, it, at this time, uh, then I learned that there was a, a third skyscraper that collapsed on 9-11. I mean, th this, most people don't even know about it. Most architects and engineers don't even know about the third worst structural failure in modern history. Mm -hmm. This is yeah, World Trade Center 7. After witnesses hear explosions, in the case of this building as well, 
it, the, the building drops like a rock smoothly, suddenly, right. symmetrically into its own footprint in under seven seconds. Now, this is as fast as a bowling ball falling out of the sky. I mean, this is a free fall acceleration straight yep. down. And how does that even happen? You have to remove all 80 columns in the building at once, or this building will begin to tip over if it's going to collapse at all due to normal office fires, which is the official narrative of how this building collapsed, came seven years after 9-11, the final report by NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, who said that um, uh, for the first time ever, office fires have brought down a skyscraper. Remember, no plane hit this building. So so here's, uh, office fires have been burning lar much larger, longer lasting. Well, well, hold on, Richard. I want I want to go back to the, this, this building seven challenge because it, it really is like the, this giant thread hanging off the sweater of the whole mythology that's like, how do you not pull this one? <laughs> and speaking of pulling, the the, 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 sto the official story has gone back and forth on this. Am, am I right that at, at first it was, well, we decided to pull it because it was being damaged by the fires. And so we decided it was too much of a risk. And they went, and this is what uh, some, uh, the owner of the building said at one point. And then did they come back later and say it was, it was just the fires? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, uh, it was a year after 9-11, actually, that uh, Larry Silverstein was caught on uh, unawares with his pants down, uh, as usual. Uh, f f uh, and he was uh, quoted, well, there's uh, been such a terrible loss of life. M maybe the smartest thing to do is pull it. And so they gave the order to pull and we watched the building come down. Now, he says later, after getting like a thousand phone calls, um, well, I, I meant I meant pull the firemen out of the building, but the no. firemen were not in the building. They were told not to fight the fire. They were told it had structural damage from some of these beams that hit it, which is ludicrous because even NIST acknowledges that the damage from the uh, the North Tower <clears throat> elements that hit it was uh, an insignificant factor in the building's collapse. It's the collapse started on the other side. They have this whole elaborate theory of how this building uh, collapsed due to expansion of long span beams pushing this girder off of its seat on this particular column in the northeast section of the building, column 79. And then that left this building, this column unbuckled. And so it, uh, begins uh, to buckle. And then you have the interior cascading <clears throat> collapse of this building on the east side. And then this, this moves over to the west. And so uh, none of this, and, and then the whole building collapses all at once. Well, none of that could be true for dozens of reasons, which we cite in our request for correction to NIST uh, and our webinars and our documentary 9-11 explosive evidence experts speak out. This building was a fireproof building. Those beams are not going to be expanding. And NIST had to omit all kinds of key structural elements in order to get any kind of a failure in their computer model, which ends up looking nothing like the videos, perfect symmetrical controlled demolition. I mean, we've all seen the old hotels in Las Vegas. And we've never lost a skyscraper. And there's been a hundred examples of very hot, large and long lasting fires in these buildings. Mm -hmm. So NIST had their work uh, cut out for them uh, to pull the wool over uh, everybody's head, but they had seven years to do it. And they, they pretty much hoped that nobody would, would and everybody would forget about it because nobody in the uh, American Institute of Architects, for instance, of which I'm a member of 90,000, we didn't receive one bulletin on the third worst structural failure in modern history after the Twin Towers. So this is, this is uh, it should have been the most studied building ever, uh, a collapse. And so we have all kinds of examples of foreknowledge of this building's uh, destruction. Yeah, you can see it there just uh, descending, just like the old hotels in Las Vegas. And we have uh, the announcement of this building's collapse uh, 20 minutes before it even happened on the BBC, an unprecedented collapse. 
Uh, yet the BBC is even given the reason why, due to structural weakening when the Twin Towers came down. They apologize for this grievous error, citing the confusing events of the day. Does this make them psychic? I mean, what's really going on here? We have construction <laughs> workers walking away from Building 7, hearing an explosion over their shoulder in the late afternoon of 9-11, looking back at the building and then looking straight into the CNN camera and saying, did you hear that? That building's going to blow up. Flame and debris coming down. Well, so there's, there's, people, yeah. there, there, there's one other element of the, the, this, the, the Building 7 story that that should be like just a glaring what the fuck to anybody looking at it honestly is when they said you know we decided to pull the building when that was the story for a while everybody said you mean you while this was going on hired an expert crew of demolition exp explosive experts to go in and actually place charges around all of the columns in building seven and then within a couple of hours they were able to do this work that normally takes weeks to plan and execute and oh, it then takes they have months. To yeah it takes months and by the way that's all while the building's uh, on fire <laughs> yeah so i i mean it seems Many like floors. they were trying to to get like they had this mixed like, whoever was behind this and and, and i want to get to that bigger story because like, this is this is kind of the process. And, and, you know, Richard, we're 19 years on here. There are people who, who are watching this show today who literally weren't alive while this happened. I mean, we have people on, we have, we have, we have minors watching the show even. And I, I, a lot of them might be going, you know, why are you still talking about this? Why is this still relevant? I want to share just a little bit about my personal history with this. I watched the Twin Towers come down on a TV on, uh, in, in, a, in a room of, of someone in my dorm in college, and I was a Marine Corps reservist at the time. And I signed up pre-9-11 with the best of intentions of you know wanting to have my life on the line to defend my country. And 9-11 happened, and somehow this got spun into the excuse to invade Iraq and Afghanistan. And the thing, when I look back on all of these historic false flag events that have been exposed, um, the main, um, uh, I, you, know, you remember the main, the singing of the main outside of Cuba. Um, I mean, you, you go back through history, there, there's so many examples where governments created a, a false flag event where they, they, they actually, they attack themselves or their own people in order to get people emotionally energized not rationally engaged, but like they don't even come up with a rational excuse. It's just like, hey, you know how 9-11 happened and there were some Muslims behind it. Well, we're going to go invade this Muslim country. And you go, I mean, even for me, looking at that rationally at the time, I was like, well, why not surgical strikes? You know, why not go after bin Laden? Why not? Go, there were 19 hijackers. Why not go after the people? But why go after an entire country? And then the excuse was, they're harboring terrorists. So is the United States. You know, by, by, the, by the rationale of, well, there are terrorists being harbored in that country, <clears throat> we got to take out the whole United States government as well. And it doesn't, it doesn't make sense because they've got, they, they, what they have done, all of this is done is it's staged to create an emotional response to get the people to go along with policy that's not in their best interest. And in my case, I volunteered to go to Iraq. And, and, and to be activated. And I saw Marines die. I saw Iraqis die. I saw the human cost of this. And so it's still important to me that people understand why I have PTSD today, because this lie was used as the excuse to invade two countries that had nothing to do with this and, and kill millions of people and spend tr literally trillions. I'm not, it's not billions, it's trillions, tens of trillions of dollars on the invasions and occupations in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I'm glad I've got you for, for the time that we have today, because we're going to get into the relevance to the presence here. And I want the audience that we're going to go through all of this. And I don't want to spend too much time going, hey, building seven. But if you, if, you, if, if you know the historical narrative, if you're a young person today, 
who wasn't old enough to, to conscientiously live through this, or you weren't alive even at the time. Why do we care? Like, and, and this is something that's not just present to me personally, but I see that because we fell for this, people died and suffered needlessly and still are today suffering and dying needlessly because we haven't learned the lessons and we haven't applied them. So we're going to connect this to the to the coronaphobia crisis. We're going to connect this to the Holocaust and, and how that's being used right now. Yeah, a lot of false flags around World War II. You, know, hey, you want to talk about Pearl Harbor as, as, as a kind of false flag because there clearly you look at the history, it was at least a Lee hop, let it happen on purpose kind of event. So excuse me, Richard, for taking so much of your time for that <laughs> background and that setup. But I want people to know, like, it's not just – hey, look, we're saying how wrong the government is and going into this like esoteric conspiracy theory thing. Like, no, this is absolutely critically important and relevant to what's going on now. So, so Richard, I, maybe if you want to give a, you know, a, a summary of how, how do, you know, why is this so important, you know, over the course of your work in this area, uh, you know, and, and what are the bigger conclusions that you have drawn from this? Oh dear, um, the uh, I realize after having looked at the evidence, not only Building Seven but of course the Twin Towers as well, which I think it's important to educate your listeners on today. Um, after you have a chance to look at the evidence, or at least hear about it on the radio of things. One, that things are not as we thought they were. My worldview turned upside down. I was rooting for Colin Powell as he was making his case for evidence of um, mass uh, destruction of weapons, weapons of mass destruction, and, and Saddam Hussein's ties to uh, Osama bin Laden. I mean, just the lies, I just swallowed them. And, and guess who was feeding me most of those lies? the mainstream media. So I found out pretty quick that the mainstream media is owned by just four, five corporations now. Um, and uh, who who runs the media? Who, who, who owns those corporations? Who's on the board of directors? Well, it's the same individuals that are on the boards of directors of <clears throat> international corporations in the arms industry, the oil industry, the banking industry, the insurance industry, all of whom profited enormously from 9-11 and, and work together, not in our best interests of the American people, but in these uh, multinational corporations' best interests. So, I mean, that was really disturbing to, to, to begin to realize that there's nothing that I could trust from the mainstream media, and then even more so that there's nothing that I could, dis that I could trust from uh, my own government. I mean, hardly any uh, elected representatives uh, and, and certainly not the president who was at the tip of the lies and his entire cabinet, of course. So uh, it was it was bad. I mean, uh, what 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 do you do as a citizen when you realize that they are lying to us uh, literally about everything? Because 9-11 is not the only rabbit hole you've climbed down uh, 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 probably many Uh oh, did we just? Uh, oh, got you back. I lost oh. you for a second there. Sorry, if I get an incoming call, that's what's going to happen. No problem. Um, so, and, and it, it's 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 just bad. It's demoralizing to the human spirit. It's it's depressing. Uh, and but there was something I could do. You know, as an architect, I knew that the twin towers. I couldn't. Uh, be driven down like we were told in the official story by NIST that the upper part of the fifth of the North Tower, 15 stories in the case of the North Tower, drove the rest of the building down to the ground and then destroyed itself. That the completely pancake theory. <laughs> yeah, it completely violates the laws of, of physics. That building gets stronger and stronger and stronger as you get down to the bottom. It's a virtual pyramid. And it's like a Volkswagen running into a Mack truck and 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 destroying it. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Plus, there's 156 witnesses that hear sounds of explosions. Um, uh, that, the ones that I heard on that original radio uh, uh, podcast. Um, 
Guns and Butter by Bonnie Faulkner in uh, on KPFA in Berkeley. So uh, I I knew that um, you, you can't have that. I knew that gravity works down. If this was a uh oh, someone is trying to get a hold of Richard this morning, or this interview is being messed with. Who's to say? Uh, let's see if we get Richard back in, in a minute here. But while while we're waiting for him, uh, I do want to point out that this historical concept of, of a false flag being used to manipulate people uh, really is nothing new. And, and I, I, I should be uh, better prepared for this. But what Richard is getting at is the media manipulation, the lessons that come out of this. So on like this is and this is um, it, Wikipedia has a page for category false flag operations. Uh, by the way, Jim, feel free just if, if, if we get Richard back, just pop him up on stage here while I'm while I'm doing the sidebar. Um, but there's like there there are, you know, at least, uh, you know, about a, a hundred of these here. That, that are accepted as uh, false flag operations by the mainstream history right now. And one of them, let's see if they have this, the uh, bombing of the Reichstag. Um, let's see if it's even on this list here. Because, uh, no, um, in Germany, the, uh, in, in order for, you know, as part of Hitler coming to power, they bombed the Reichstag, the German Capitol building, and blamed it on uh, communists. So let's see if it's on this list here. But this list is, is uh, oh, hey, we've got Richard back. All right. So, Richard, I was just going over the, the, the extensive human history of, of false flag attacks. But uh, please, back, back to where you were. We uh, Sorry, we, have a, we moved back to cellular connection here. Um, something happened on the Wi-Fi. But... Um, I knew that to gravity works down, uh, but what we have is freely flying eight and four ton structural steel sections laterally out of the towers, landing 600 feet in every direction, thousands of them. These are clocked by physicists at 80 miles an hour. The gravity does not do that, and they're trailed by thick white smoke clouds. This is absolutely incredible evidence in and of itself for something way beyond what we're told, but it gets worse. There's evidence of, of the, uh, well, the, 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 the hundreds of witnesses of explosions before the towers came down. We mentioned that pop, 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 like a firecracker all around the building, one of them says. The other one says, um, uh, uh, like, like, uh, like firecrackers, uh, they say. Another one says, like a train running underneath my feet. Uh, and then the building starts falling. Uh, all of these, most of these occur, be these sounds of explosions before the tower starts collapsing. This is extremely important. And then there's squibs or isolated explosive ejections. I know that uh, collapsing buildings don't do that 20, 40, even 60 stories down below the collapsing building. These are ejected at 200 feet per second. These are explosive speeds. And then we have the study of the dust by official sources like the US Geological Survey and RJ Lee Group who find in all the World Trade Center samples uh, billions of these molt previously molten iron microspheres. Well, this is extremely important evidence. There's up to four tons of this material, but they don't know where it came from. Well, where the hell does molten iron come from? It comes from thermite. Thermite is an incendiary used by the military to cut through steel like a hot knife through butter. So we have a direct evidence of thermite produced by these agencies, not conspiracy theorists. They don't know where they are. They, they document them very carefully. They say this is evidence of World Trade Center dust. In other words, it's not even World Trade Center dust unless it has all these unknown origin, previously molten, indicating 2,800 degree temperatures Fahrenheit, when jet fuel can even burn a quarter of those temperatures. And then... Okay, okay so Richard, hold on. I want to I I stop you on the technical stuff here in a sense. and Because there's a mountain of evidence. 
And and I think if anybody doubts you, they can go look at this for themselves. And it's one of those things where you go, well, here's the mainstream story and here's the evidence they're given with that. What are they not telling you? And you go, you go look one layer under the surface. You go, you examine the physics. You look at the, the 9-11 first responders testimony. It's undeniable that there were explosives in the buildings, uh, both the Twin Towers and Building 7. And if you have to start with Building 7 to go, well, I can't deny this, then you can't deny this. And then you have to, and, and then you can't deny, well, then the mainstream media has been lying about this. But there still seems to be a major area of uncertainty, even among, you know, 9-11 truthers that about, you know, who was behind it and how it happened. So is there, is there, a, a, a do, you, do you hit a point in your analysis of 9-11 where you go, and then we just don't know, because these are people who operate behind the shadows, or is there a next chain of events that are, or, or logic and reason that you can walk us through? I mean, you went, okay, building seven. Hey, they lied about the story one way or another, because there are two different stories. And physically what happened had to have been by explosives. And you go, well, Twin Towers, same thing. And then you go, well, and the media was lying to us about it. And we got lied into these two wars occupations. But when people go, well, well, who is really behind it? Did they, did they let it happen on purpose, make it happen on purpose? How involved was the government? Who's really behind that? Do, do you run into confusion or do you have a similar chain of logic and reason that, that leads you to the bottom of this rabbit hole? Yeah, but um, Adam, it's the evidence itself that leads us to who did it. I mean, fundamentalist Muslim hijackers operating out of a cave are not going to be manufacturing high-tech nanothermite, which was also found in the World Trade Center dust by a team of eight international scientists. Red on one side, gray on the other. These dual-layered chips are extremely high-tech material made only in the most advanced defense contracting laboratories. So we know who makes those. Lawrence Livermore Lab put this information out before 9-11. Um, we, we know that it's an incendiary thermite, uh, which is engineered to become <clears throat> more explosive. Uh, we know because it's at the nanoscale, these particles of thermite, which are iron oxide and aluminum powder, are engineered from the bottom up, from the atomic scale up. These particles are a thousand times smaller in the diameter of a human hair. When you put them in a heater, a differential scanning calorimeter, we see that they produce what? Molten iron microspheres with the same chemical signature as those found by the USGS and RJ Lee. So okay, so well, I got I got I got to insert the challenge here because every skeptic, well, how come they couldn't? I mean, maybe they were stolen from these contractors, and maybe they were given to Muslims, and maybe you know, like you can't say that the people who made it, if that's what they had to be behind it, right? We're talking about fifty tons of extremely sophisticated nanothermite explosives that had to be wheeled into the World Trade Center under the nose of security. So they had to have control of the security apparatus, which, by the way, was controlled by Securicom, Stratasec, uh, in, in the months before 9-11. We know that they had to have access to the core towers, which we know, by the way, was under uh, the, the elevators. Uh, had to had to have been compromised. So we know that they were uh, being modernized in the largest elevator modernization in the world going on the nine months prior to 9-11. So who had access, who, who was a elevator who, who came up out of nowhere to get this contract who, who because they, Ele, Otis Elevator had installed these elevators and had been maintaining them up to this time. Ace okay, so, had so two, two, two immediate challenges here. I just, I just want to get through <laughs> some of these objections that, that come up when you make these points. Okay, so how can you have a conspiracy like this with so many people involved? And not, there's, there's a sort of limit of plausibility at, at the point of complexity where you go, yeah, but in order for that to happen, you had to at least have had dozens if not hundreds uh, of people in on the conspiracy and then what's up with the planes why bother with the planes well it's the planes that create the psychological damage to the people uh in the first place uh crashing into these buildings with these huge fireballs 
that's creating emotional trauma as much or perhaps even more than the murder, the mass murder of 3,000 people here, and, and which is mass treason, uh, treason, by the way, too. So, uh, you, 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 uh, I mean, you had to have a reason that the buildings came down, and the planes give you that false reason. Uh, and so the, the drama, I mean, the drama is, is that not only the towers were attacked, but the Pentagon and uh, something else was under attack with the fourth uh, plane. The White House, they were coming for our dear yeah. leader. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they, so. Uh, and, and in the case of the Pentagon, we all want a new investigation of the Pentagon. I mean, we disagree. Some of us, uh, most of us have disagreements with every, the rest of us about what did or didn't bring down the Pentagon. But we all know that a new investigation is required because nothing should have brought down the high, most highly defended building in the world. Especially, and I think we can all agree that the footage, I think there, there's just, you know, Richard, one of the, it, it, to me, this gets to like, my personal immediate dilemma with censorship, right? Why would I get censored for talking about false positive COVID tests? And the same way you got to ask, why would they hide the security footage around the Pentagon, even going so far as to steal it from the hotel buildings across the freeway that had the view that would have showed what actually hit the Pentagon? Why is all that? Why is all of this being hidden? Even now, 19 years later, we can't. And, and I know this is a bit of a sidebar here, but just about hiding data. Donald Trump said that, well, now that we have the legal ability to release the files around JFK, I'm going to do that. And then he's given two chances to do it. And oh, never mind. We can't do it. You know, there's there's that you don't you don't censor something unless you're trying to hide that you're doing something wrong. Yeah. And then where where was all the damage in the Pentagon? Not not in Donald Rumsfeld's office, which would have been the financial records get. rooms. Yeah, the financial records looking that the, the, the Naval Intelligence Agency was looking for the 2.3 trillion dollars that Donald Rumsfeld had announced the night before was missing from the Pentagon budget. I mean, this this is just a, a classic um a black operation uh, and you know, for for a large part, they get away with it because there's not enough Adam Kokishes out there, uh, or or me, uh, or or others, uh, brave. You know, uh, uh, alternative media specialists who are just getting the word out. We get, and then you get out there, and like you mentioned, you you get deplatformed uh, and, and and demonetized. Uh, we, we, we have a real problem here. I mean, we've, we've suffered a lot of algorithm manipulation uh, at AE911 Truth. We've been stuck at about 54,000 YouTubes for years. So this, this is a huge problem for us as well. Yeah, it's funny. You mentioned that it, something that we haven't really talked about in, in all the censorship that I've experienced. But I have I've noticed that I've got a follower cap on YouTube of about a quarter million. And even now, like regular production there doesn't really get that to move much. And the other place that's happened to me that's that's kind of fun. Well, Facebook also, I guess my my followers, but I haven't been as active there. But Instagram, I'm I'm consistently active on Instagram and I'm stuck in between twenty and twenty two thousand. And I've I've been like that for years. And you go. That's that's like a weird kind of growth limit. Interesting to hear that you've experienced the same thing. Now, now, Richard, I, I we don't have a lot of time, and I want to make sure that we move on to some of the bigger implications and and fit this into an historical context. Um, are are have you looked into uh, the Holocaust uh, from from the same perspective of uh, historical skepticism as as you have nine eleven? I haven't had time. But I understand there's some serious questions raised there. Right. So I, I just want to point out a couple of stories and we won't get too far into it. But one of the headlines today is nearly two thirds of U.S. young adults unaware of six million Jews killed in the Holocaust. And from my understanding of history, that wasn't the Holocaust. The Holocaust was one to two million Jews, gypsies, Polacks and other undesirables who died in uh, the labor camps, forced labor camps being being run by the Nazis. And that the mythology of the Holocaust was blown up afterwards, 
and that this figure of, of six million um, is, is largely fabricated. Look at the work of David Cole slash David Stein, who went and actually proved that the gas chambers at Auschwitz physically were incapable of being used as gas chambers the way they were designed. And the, people don't go, oh, thank you. Thank you so much for, for correcting the record. Thank you so much for, for helping us understand what really happened and, and why this is being used as propaganda today. And like the other article, Union Station, Kansas City to host unprecedented exhibition on Auschwitz. Even with this, you know, uh, 80 years, 80 years on uh, from World War II or 75, whatever you want, wherever you want to pinpoint the start, uh, they're still putting out this propaganda. And I think there's a, you think about the biggest rackets of government today in banking and militarism, they have to maintain this mainstream mythology that this is good for the world, that, that it was the, the Axis saved, or the Allies saved the world from the Axis. And when that mythology started fading, 9-11 became the new justification. And yeah. so in, in the 19 years since, do you think you can comment on how this has been used? Do you all, you know, all the never forget. And I, by the way, one of my favorite memes I, I shared on, on 9-11 this year was, is a picture of the Twin Towers and Building 7. And on the Twin Towers, it says, never forget. And then on Building 7, it says, forget. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I love that one. What do you think this mythology has been used to, aside from the obvious invasion occupations with Iraq and Afghanistan, but at a deeper level, the way this mythology has been been promoted and and driven into the American psyche since, you know, what do what mythologies you know trust the government, trust the mainstream media, hate the Muslims, you know, whatever it is. How do you see this story in particular being used to distort Americans' understanding of the world? <clears throat> where we're going to be, we were told we were going to be in a war without end. This is the $6.5 trillion global war on terror. So our grandchildren are paying for a war that was started under completely false pretenses. So every one of us should be standing up and screaming from the rooftops and posting everywhere we can uh, on Twitter and sending the AE911truth.org link to everybody that every architect and engineer we can find and everybody else that we know our elected representatives. So we've, we've been manipulated six ways from Sunday. And so the, the, the narrative uh, as you've described um, is, uh, 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 you know, support the troops. That's another one that came out. Well, yeah, we can support the troops by bringing them home where they belong. Um, we can support the troops by telling them the truth of what they were sent to Afghanistan and Iraq for. Uh, and so let's uh, let's let's start there and, and just speak. Um, I mean, this these lies are are deep in our psyche now and in fear of Muslims, as you mentioned, is 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 one of them. But fear itself is is the main problem. And. That's nowhere more exploited than uh, today with COVID. Now it's not the Muslims, right? It's you who could give me uh, COVID. And so I've got to protect myself from you by distancing, and I've got to wear a mask. And um, they've achieved a much greater uh, real estate here with this uh, false narrative than they have, I think, even with 9-11. Uh, but... Uh, I think the two, well, one is <clears throat> they wake each other up. Uh, these issues wake people up. Um, so people are more open now to 9-11 and understanding what happened because COVID is just another false flag operation. Well, I think there's like a chain of lies. And, I, and to go back to World War II, it was we need a giant military to keep the world safe in case this ever happens again, right? And then 9-11, well, we need... A, national, a global surveillance state. We need a war on terror to make sure this never happens again. You know, Corona, we need the government to be able to control your 
your personal hygiene life in, in, in a way so that it never happens again. Now, I want to make the connection for my audience. The reason people are suffering right now with Corona, and I don't mean the virus, I mean the Karen crisis around it, but the reason that people are suffering right now and the reason suicides are so high is because not enough people question 9-11, because not enough people question the Holocaust, because not enough people question every other false flag in government mythology that grew up around this. And, and you said earlier that what, you know, that, that, that people like us have a certain courage in speaking out. And I, I, don't, I don't disagree that there's an element of courage, but I think it's more intellectual integrity that, that you see something wrong and instead of just accepting, I'm going to live my life based on this bad idea, I'm going to critically examine it, especially if it's being used as a justification for some massive action that is leading to one way or another incalculable human suffering. Is it is it absurd for me or can, can you back up my statement to say the reason people are committing suicide because of Corona isolation right now is because not enough people question 9-11 when it happened. Yeah, well, the, it, it would be reasonable to say that if more people question 9-11 when it happened, um, they wouldn't be subject to uh, mass hypnosis, uh, which is what's going on now. Uh, so uh, they, they'd be free. Um, so yeah, that's a, a very reasonable assertion. And that's why I worked so hard for 14 years uh, and, and that's why we have 3,300 architects and engineers signed on to our petition demanding a new investigation into the destruction of all three of these World Trade Center skyscrapers. I mean, I, I, I think uh, it's not too late. I think uh, that uh, people are more open, thanks to, to uh, voices like yours, uh, to uh, questioning their government. And so this is the time that we've been working really hard uh, at AE 9-11 Truth uh, with, our, with several lawsuits that uh, we've been able to raise the funds for, including Matt Campbell uh, in the UK who lost his brother Jeff on the 106th floor of the North Tower. He was murdered. Uh, his body was blown to small pieces, just like um, most all the other bodies. There are only 300 whole bodies found, by the way. 1,100 of them, they couldn't find any piece whatsoever. They were vaporized. This is also direct evidence of explosive, uh, ex extremely explosive destruction. And so we, he's seeking a new inquest in the UK when we've hired one of the best lawyers in the UK, uh, Nick Stanage of Dowdy Street Chambers, and he's taken on the government uh, and uh, before and won. So this is an extraordinary opportunity. All we have to do is prove that a new inquest into his brother's death might yield a different result. And it will, because uh, the evidence is overwhelming, according to the, uh, the the barrister himself. That's what they call lawyers over there. So, right, so hold this... on. I want to challenge you on a couple of things you said. I mean, this is this is exciting to think that maybe maybe when a false flag of this scale happens in the age of the internet, maybe it, maybe it takes twenty years, but eventually the truth becomes undeniable, and you can't stop even the official mechanisms of government investigation and adjudication from looking at the evidence and, and, and coming to at least some conclusions that challenge the original narrative. But I, you know, I want why, like why still, why, like we're on to the next thing. You And I want to challenge you on this term hypnotized. I, I mean, I think about the people who I know uh, in, in my family who wear masks proactively and they will go, Oh, I'm not hypnotized. I'm just, responding rationally to this threat that I've been told about. You know, I'm not hypnotized. How, how dare you say that I'm hypnotized because I'm taking safety precautions to protect the health of me and my family and, and my elderly grandparents or parents or whatever. Uh, but about the investigation, like why not move on to, why not move on to COVID? You know, why, why is it still worth going back 20 years to 9-11 instead of saying, well, there's a new conspiracy. There's a new thing they've got us hypnotized with now. Well, I'm not qualified to jump onto every new conspiracy that comes on. And there, there are too many of them, first of all, and they're all real uh, that I've uh, investigated so far. Um, uh, but I'm an architect. Just keep coming. 
we we have uh, two we have three thousand architects and engineers uh, that that whose mission is is not to uh, to uh, uh, sh- open everybody up to the truth about COVID nineteen. It's it's about buildings, and uh, very limited to the World Trade Center actually. Uh, and we make headway with the engineers and the architects. We've we've been to D.C. every year. Uh, we have dozens of appointments with staffers and some congresspersons. We're trying to make a, a headway on a, a new investigation of the destruction of these towers, and that takes years and years. Um, and th- th- so w- we're making progress. Uh, we we have a lawsuit uh, that we've submitted. Well, it's a petition for a special grand jury investigation of the destruction of the towers that we submitted to the uh, attorney general. And he has promised in writing that he will comply with the law, which requires him to give this uh, 60 exhibits of our evidence to to the uh, special grand jury. And uh, he hasn't shown us that he's done that. So we sued him with a mandamus lawsuit. Uh, And that's uh, going back and forth right now, reaching uh, judgment. Uh, by the by the judge and and we have also sued the FBI for withholding from Congress the evidence that we've given them over the years that they've proven to us that they actually have and were required to give to Congress uh, so we have lots of uh, opportunities uh, we're, we're we've given uh, many many dozen presentations to engineers just in the last couple of years uh, and virtual presentations now because of covid al- actually allow us to reach a little further into the uh, virtual classrooms of, of the student chapters of the American Society of Civil Engineers. And, and so we, we, and everybody who watches these presentations uh, without, without, um, without exception uh, wants a new investigation or at least doesn't agree anymore with the official inv- investigation because they never knew what it was because this is a non-subject. Again, we weren't told about Building 7. What we were told about the Twin Towers is, is, is a very, a very um, surface uh, or obscure uh, on both sides. They, they, were, they, they told us that they were, they were tasked by Congress to explain the collapses of all three towers. But what they did with regard to the Twin Towers, they had their own f- agenda hidden on footnote uh, 13 on page 82 that says, oh, we only investigated up to the initiation of collapse because everybody knows what happened after that. It collapsed <laughs> by, at free fall, by the way, is what they even admit to. Yeah, it, it's pretty ludicrous. We're making progress. So we have to stick with what we're doing. We're specialists. So, Richard, I'm, I'm really encouraged by this because, you know, even before this interview, as, as, as familiar as I am with with your work, I I wasn't really aware of how effective this might be as a as a leverage point against the evils of the state, that you're actually on the verge of, of a potential breakthrough with this in terms of you know mainstream acceptance of the truth of what happened and pushing out the the lies around 9/11. So that's I, I'm I'm very encouraged by that. But, you know, the next question I got to ask, and, and this is the last one, if you if, if you want to, you know, wrap up or, you know, whatever, whatever final thoughts you want with this. But, um, you know, again, a skeptic might say it's been 19 years. Let it go. You're not going to bring any of these people back. You're not you're not going to suck any of the, the blood out of the sand in the Middle East. You're not going to untraumatize people. What are you actually hoping to accomplish with this? Why, why open the wound, Richard? Why, why, and why invoke all this pain and suffering and these hard issues for people to deal with just so that you can be proven right? Yeah. Wow. A powerful question. The only thing that is going to heal the pain of the victims' family members is the truth about what happened. Everything else just prolongs the pain, deepens the suffering, and that's what they want. They're trying to drive everybody under the ground in pain so that they become dysfunctional. They paid them a million dollars to shut up, and they did for the most part. Three dozen of the family members have signed on to our petition 
uh, demanding a new investigation. You know, not everybody is awake. Not everybody. Wait, if I, if I sign on to your petition, will they give me a million dollars for not talking about it? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no. Uh, but um, so this is true at a societal level, too. We were raped by our own government. This is not uh, dis, dis, this is not different from a, a very dysfunctional uh, family suffering uh, the ravages of incest. Uh, you, you don't just as an as a infant or a preteen or even a teen and then er, early an adult sometimes just come out and start naming what, what went on in, in, a, in a secret system uh, which necessarily has to uh, especially with young children, worship the father figure, in our case, the government, uh, uh, when they're suffering under trauma. It, it just can't happen. It takes decades and decades uh, for, for incest victims to, to get strong enough to challenge uh, those, those forces. And, the, and, and if they do that too, too soon, they just get shut down. And, and that's what happens to the 9-11 truth movement. They just get shut down uh, by the abusive voices from the media and the government and even other Americans who, who can't handle the truth. Uh, so the, the truth is going to un, uncover this deep, dark, and you're right, very painful um, episode, this chapter in our lives. But it's the only thing that's going to free us as, as people. Uh, this one issue uh, can free uh, the, the world uh, to the other, uh, to to be strong enough to then take on these other issues uh, like COVID and so forth. Yeah, well said. Now, Richard, uh, it's it's really an honor to have you with us today, uh, Jim. If you get his his website up on on the screen there, ae nine one one truth dot org. If if you haven't at least taken the time to come because this this is one of those issues this is still immediately relevant to american politics and militarism and foreign policy and the patriot act and the surveillance state and if you haven't taken the time to at least come to uh, some conclusions based on critical examination of 9 11 no matter how old you are it's worth doing it. AE911truth.org is a great place to start and get to that point of, of peace and acceptance and understanding about this. And I would encourage people, I think there's a deeper lesson here, you know, about pulling threads on sweaters, whether it's COVID or World War II or the, the Holocaust or anything else, when those things come up and you hear them, I want I want you to think, I really want to encourage not just anybody who's watching, but my, my hardcore listeners, when when you when you have the conversations today and someone someone makes an assumption or a statement that you go, ah, that doesn't quite smell right. That doesn't quite jive with my understanding of the world. Or like, you know, are, are you sure about that? You know, check your premises. And, and I guess I could say, you know, have the courage to indulge your instincts for intellectual integrity, mm. to have a consistent worldview based on logic and reason and evidence, not propaganda. And I, I got to say, Richard Gage and his organization are one of the greatest forces in the world today for achieving that and, and raising that standard of human intellectual integrity. So Richard, again, thank you for joining us and, and thank you for your work in this field today. Thank you, Adam. Pleasure to be here and my honor too.